discover China. The discovery of a human skull has given us yet another clue in the evolution of the human race. Those that lived thousands of years before us in ancient times have kindled the fire of human civilization. Join us as Discover China follows these tracks through time, seeking the Peking Man. It was a cold day on the North China Plain in March of 1918. To the west of the plain, Taihung Mountain was looming. The man overlooking the mountain was a Swedish geologist named Andersen. He was awestruck by the limestone mountain when he saw it for the first time. It was the fourth year that Andersen had served as a specially invited Swedish geologist by the reigning warlords of the northern Chinese government. Andersen's journey to Taihung Mountain was really a coincidence. Some old friends had brought over a few fossilized bones gathered from a nearby Beijing suburb. Anderson found these mammalian fossils quite unusual. He wanted to learn more about these artifacts. Since human beings are members of the mammal family, the study of mammals is also the study of the origins of man. The fossils were found in the Zhou Kodian village in southwest Beijing. Anderson began paying special attention to this small village. This trip to Zhou Kodian in the spring of 1918 marked the beginning of a series of explorations around the area. Anderson soon appointed an Austrian scholar by the name of Zidansky to investigate around the Jigu Mountain, also located in Zhou Kodian. After three years, the scientists found some fossil fragments with sharp edges, which to them suggested that they were shaped that way by someone. Anderson then boldly concluded that human remains were buried in the vicinity. The only problem was finding them. During an excavation in the summer of 1926, Zidansky found a fossilized molar tooth. He went on to verify that this tooth might belong to an ape man. This discovery attracted many scholars as well as international funding. With the efforts of Canadian scholar Davidson Black and the help of the Union Medical College, Anderson founded the Research Institute for Physical Anthropology. This organization made a formal agreement with the China Geological Society to jointly excavate around Zhou Kodian. Sponsored by the Rockefeller Foundation, the Zhou Kodian excavation works continued in full earnest. Swedish geologist Anders Berger Bolin and the Chinese geologist Li Jia jointly led the excavation. This was the first time that Chinese scholars had formally participated in this kind of archaeological excavation. The sole aim of this international cooperation was to unearth the remains of human beings around Zhou Kodian. The area is rich in many natural caves brimming with fossils. Scholars everywhere felt excited about this unexpected discovery. In October 1927, the first major discovery was made in Zhou Kodian. 
Black, who was in charge of the work, exclaimed, We finally found a beautiful human tooth on October 16th. This is truly splendid news. The fossil verified the existence of a new species of a human being. Black dubbed it Cynanthropus pekinesis, or Peking Man. Peking Man had lived during the tertiary period about 500,000 years ago. It was the oldest human fossil that had ever been found in Asia at that time. The news shocked the scientific community. The name Peking Man has been widely spread since that initial discovery. However, scientists are always skeptical about discoveries. One tooth was not enough to prove the existence of a new species. Peking man needed to be explored even further. Nineteen twenty nine passed by. Though many animal fossils had been found, no ape man fossils appeared in the digs. During this period, foreign experts felt that their Chinese counterparts had mastered the skills and methods needed for conducting modern field archaeology. They therefore handed the exploration work over to the Chinese. In this photo, the leftmost scientist is Pei Wen Zhang. He had graduated from the Department of Geology in Peking University. In 1929, he was appointed to direct the exploration work in Zhou Kodian. It was a cold month of December, and the fieldwork was just about to stop. Researchers were still working hard on October 2nd, trying to find more fossils before they ended their work for the year. Pei Wen Zhang was observing the layers of earth when a man in the field shouted, I found a big object. It seems to be a rhinoceros's thigh bone. Pei Wen Zhang decided to go down to the field and take a closer look. The night was dark, still, and quiet. The flickering candles lit up the gravel and dust. Pei was thrilled. In his hands, he was holding a human skull. Could this be a skull that had survived being buried for hundreds of thousands of years? this young scientist could not believe his eyes. This find, a damp, grayish, and fragile skull, would later be put on display for the whole world. On December 28, 1929, a special conference of the China Geology Society was held. Pei Wen Zhang showed this first skull of the Peking Ape Man to the scientists and journalists from both home and abroad. It caused quite a stir and received thunderous applause. Pei Wen Zhang was 25 years old then. The scientific community began intensive testing on the recovered human fossils in order to track and unveil the age of this ancient ancestor. 
Although Peking man is not the earliest evidence of our human species, it is considered to be an important link between apes and humans. That is why the Peking man is considered to be one of the most important discoveries in the history of the human race. The ape man walked on rocks and sand, searching for proper shelter to live in. With a strong sense for survival and a desire for a better life, they finally found forests with warm and humid climates. They found shelter in caves. the saber-toothed tiger, a predator that stalked the morning dew-covered forest. witnessing landslides and devastating fires would have surprised the primitive ape-man. Fire must have been a threatening force to the ape-man. However, the aroma of the charred roasted meat was enticing. Tentatively, they put the meat into their mouths. To their surprise, the burnt meat was delicious. In order to eat the same delicious food in the future, they needed this miraculous thing called fire. Another hundred thousand years passed. Mother Nature created fires at times. Eventually, the ape men lost their fear of fire and learned how to control and keep it. The dangerous saber-toothed tiger still hunted the nearby ape man. All animals were afraid of fire. Fire soon became the cave guardian for the ape man. With the help of fire, human beings completed their evolutionary process quickly. These images on the wall may portray the way our ancestors created memories through images. They also display the artistic awareness of our ancestors. Natural selection has always been the basic rule of evolution. September 18, 1931, the Japanese invaded Northeast China. Because of the turbulent situation, accompanied by too few important discoveries in Zhou Kodian, in the beginning of 1936, the Rockefeller Foundation had decided to cut its funding. Exploration work in Zhou Kodian came to a near standstill. Jia Lam 
Pohl, less than 25 years old at the time, was leading the excavation work. With only a high school diploma, Jiao later became a famous paleoanthropologist regarded as one of China's national treasures. On the morning of November 15, 1936, exciting results came from the test of the very first relic. Scholars first found one part of a mandible bone. Soon followed occipital, brow ridge, and ear bones. Finally, an entire skull appeared. Another one was unearthed that afternoon. It was split into several parts. Jia Lam Po asked his colleagues to try and glue the skull together that evening, and the two skulls were then pieced together. Eleven days later, on November 26th, a third skull was found. The discovery of the three skulls at almost the same time shocked the world again. Meanwhile, thousands of stone tools, as well as plant and animal fossils, were unearthed at Jokodian. All these stone implements showed that the Peking Ape Man had already mastered the skills of using material for his own use. The discovery of the Peking Man's skulls and stone tools proved the evolutionary existence of an Ape Man. More and more people began to believe that human beings evolved from apes. On July 7, 1937, the Japanese invasion of China extended to Beijing. The war between Japan and China broke out on all fronts. Beijing was occupied by Japanese forces, and so was Zhou Kodian. The excavation work once again stopped. It seemed the Peking Ape Man was destined to experience this catastrophe, along with their modern-day brethren in Beijing. At the end of 1937, two Japanese scholars from the Tokyo Imperial University found Pei Wen Zhang. They told him they were hoping to have a look at the skulls for academic purposes. Pei Wen Zhang refused, fearing that these valuable relics would fall into Japanese hands. The skulls were then still under the supervision of the related departments in China. They were locked in the vault of the anatomy department at the Union Medical College, which was regarded as U.S. territory. The Japanese dared not to break into the college. However, because of deteriorating international conditions, the skulls soon faced the need to be moved. The German scholar Franz Weidenreich, who specialized in the study of Peking Man fossils, suggested that all fossils should be shipped to the American Museum of Natural History in New York for further study. However, according to the Sino-US contract, all things excavated from Zhou Kodian belong to China. Therefore, the relics should not be exported. Three options were presented move the fossils to the alternate capital of Chongqing, bury the fossils back in Beijing behind the Japanese backs. The most unpopular option, but the safest, was to move the fossils to the United States. Ultimately, the third option was thought to be the most feasible. On December 5th, 1941, the Peking Man's skulls were packed and moved onto a special U.S. Marine Corps train headed for Qinghuangdao. The train arrived at Qinghuangdao on December 8th. Unfortunately, on December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor took place and the Pacific War broke out. The Japanese army landed on Shanghai Guam, northeast of Qinghuangdao city. They attacked the U.S. Army and immediately 
took possession of the special train. The only definite record of the skulls was that they were packed in Union Medical College at the end of November 1941. Were the skulls moved to the U.S. Consulate in December? Were the two cases of fossils carried on to the special train? What happened when the train arrived at Tianjin Port? Whose hands did these relics fall into when the train arrived at Qinghuangdao while the American barracks had already been occupied by Japanese troops? The story of the skull fossils does not end here. The Japanese disclosed the news six months later. The skulls at the Peking Union Medical College were listed as stolen. Japanese military headquarters in Beijing issued an order to search for the missing Peking man fossils. At the end of 1942, a Japanese military detective knocked on the doors of the relevant Chinese experts and personnel. He was tasked with the recovery of the missing fossils. He searched in every possible corner in Beijing and Tianjin, but found nothing. The Peking Man fossils have vanished. Were they destroyed in the war, or did they fall into some unscrupulous hands of Chinese, American, or Japanese? This is the unsolved archaeological enigma of the 20th century. It is now becoming a more acceptable notion that mankind is descended from apes. It is considered in many circles to be nothing more than a scientific assumption. However, there are many who believe that the Peking ape-man fossils unearthed in Zhou Kodian would help convert this assumption into scientific fact. Since the first Peking eight-man skull was uncovered on December 2, 1929, the human race has begun to gain a better sense of our origins. We see ourselves in time, both past and future. Mankind has never stopped evolving.